I was a guest on a few different live streams during the election, and on one of those streams, the different people I was talking to were discussing the likelihood of Trump beating the odds. You know, everyone had said that the polls were terrible, yet again, they were giving Biden a 90% chance to win. But we were saying, okay, what if Trump beats these odds? What if he's actually able to make this a tight one and he's actually able to contest the election? And my prediction was that if this was a close selection in any way that we would see interference by the media, that we would see them providing biased coverage, them providing cover for different ballot counting shenanigans, basically that we would see the media arm of the cathedral work to control the story, control the flow of information, and manipulate it to make sure that Trump was unable to secure a victory if it was anywhere close. Now, I have to say, while I did make that prediction, I could not have predicted how blatant the cathedral would be in its announcement that it was actually the power that decides who is president. I could not have predicted how clearly the cathedral would unmask itself in front of the country during the 2020 election. We saw these media companies, these parts of the cathedral, declaring their power out in the open. The New York Times was tweeting about its duty and its sacred role to declare who will lead the United States. While media organizations found the confidence over and over again to declare states early for Biden and hold off declaring basically anything for Trump, no matter how large his lead, if Trump or anyone from the right declared a state in his favor, Twitter would censor the announcement saying that it didn't have enough official sources that were agreeing with it. And by official sources, of course, they meant places like the New York Times and CNN. They didn't mean state election commission or anything with formal government power, when they say official sources, they meant the media, the actual official sources, the ones that really wield power. For weeks leading up to the election, we had seen many different news sources building this red mirage narrative where Trump was expected to look like he was winning early, but then as the night went on, suddenly Joe Biden would find himself in the lead. And of course, after different poll watchers were thrown out and counts started and stopped and were delayed inexplicably and then hundreds of thousands of votes were magically found, it turned out that that narrative happened exactly the way they had predicted. It turned out that their prophecy had been fulfilled. And after a few days of ongoing vote counting, flipping each state one by one in Biden's favor, the media companies went ahead and declared Biden as the winner, despite multiple ongoing recounts having just been announced by the very states that were contested and ongoing litigation having been filed in the courts. The media, of course, was not going to wait for any of these outcomes. It wanted to cement in the mind of the average American that Joe Biden had won this election, that he was the rightful president-elect, and that any challenge to this was an attempt to destroy democracy. It was a terrible threat, a rejection of the basic principles of the United States. It was Trump being everything they had feared, not wanting to step down, refusing to hand over power. It played exactly into the storyline that they had been building, the entire Trump administration. Many on the right are hoping that Trump will be saved by these recounts or by the pending litigation which will almost assuredly move to the Supreme Court. While I certainly want them to be right about that, I am less than optimistic. The Supreme Court was basically ignored by Pennsylvania during this process which came as a shock to many different people on the right, but all I can say is, guys, formal power is not where the power lies right now. And they know this. It doesn't matter if the right has more people on the Supreme Court. Hopefully that becomes a remedy, but like I said, I just think it's very doubtful. I think if this does make it to the Supreme Court, and even if they do actually rule in Trump's favor, which I'm kind of doubtful that they actually will, it'll probably just end up being hung on some low-level functionary, some bureaucrat, and the election at large will still stand, and Trump will still be defeated. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear that. And look, I'm not trying to break anybody's spirit here. It just, from the evidence we're looking at, that's how it seems like it's going to go. I have a hard time seeing it go another way. 
Like I said, I would really be happy to be wrong about this, but I don't think I am. I just don't think that the Supreme Court is going to save Trump on this one. Justices that have recently been appointed by the GOP tend to go out there and try to show that they are impartial by immediately slapping down the party that put them into power. It happens all the time, and this is going to be one of those cases that is, of course, possibly the most high profile in all of U.S. history. I'm pretty sure that's the way they're going to go. Again, I know this is a downer for a lot of people, but this is what we've been talking about. This is what we should have been expecting. This is why I predicted that when I was talking about it on the election night stream, because this is the kind of power that we are facing. This is the power that the cathedral wields, and we need to understand it. I think the good news that everyone should be taking out of this is even if Trump loses ultimately and Biden does come to power, this has been the single greatest unmasking of the cathedral to the public in my lifetime. If there is one valuable function that 2020 has served, it is lighting up the cathedral for everyone to see. The media was blatant and obvious about what they were doing. In fact, they often went around boasting and bragging about how it was their job to do it. Normal people in my life, slightly right of center, who I have never had any conversations with about NRX or the Cathedral, Neo Reaction, any of this stuff, Mold Bug, they are noticing. They are noticing this stuff. They are coming up to me and saying, why does it feel like the media is in charge of all of this? I'm having these conversations and they're just saying, look, I was watching President Trump and the media just decided that he was wrong and lying and they cut him off and I couldn't even hear what he was saying anymore. I couldn't even go online and read his tweets. I didn't know what was going on. This is an opportunity. Trump's value was never that he was somehow going to single-handedly bring down the cathedral, that he was somehow going to single-handedly bring down the progressive machine. That was never going to happen just with Trump alone. But what Trump did so well was drive these people absolutely insane, especially the ones that had actually drank the Kool-Aid, especially the part of the cathedral that had actually totally consumed and believed its own noble lie. Those people had completely gone mad with power attempting to crush Trump and those who agreed with him. And that blatant, foaming at the mouth expression of power out in public is what exposes the cathedral to the average person. Because even as the left ascends to heights of power that it has never had before, levels of control which it has never possessed, at the same time it can also feel that power slipping. What made the cathedral so powerful, what made the cathedral so effective, was that it wielded its soft power below the radar. It did not have to show the power. The power did not have to be seen. That's what made it so effective. And Trump put them in such a state that they could not control themselves. They were drunk on this power. They expected to rule. They never expected to be challenged. They certainly didn't expect to be insulted. And when Trump did those things, they lost their minds and they expressed the power that they had always held out in front of everyone for all of the people to see. This makes them vulnerable. The left will maintain power. The cathedral will continue to operate, but it is now damaged. It is now exposed to those who have eyes to see it. And this is a good thing. This is something we can genuinely be happy about. But unfortunately, this election has also shown that the right is still not ready. Too many in the right even those who are somewhat keyed into what is going on, still seemed shocked by the events that were unfolding before them. They always seem to think that at some point the left is going to be forced to play by the rules, that at some point power will conform to the game that has been described to them, one that has these different standards, these different rule sets, these different procedures that must be followed. But that will never happen. Because the game was invented by the left. The game was invented by the cathedral. That is why it is there. To trap you. To trap you in the frame of believing that this is how power actually works. That the formal government that you were told runs the country. At some point, it will have to actually do that. It does not. It will not. 
the Constitution of the United States will not at some point magically reassert itself. That is not going to happen. The right has simply not learned this lesson yet, and it cannot win until it does. Curtis Yarvin wrote a great essay after the election, which I suggest everyone reads, and in it he made a great point about why the right is simply not yet ready to take power. He explained what the right is getting wrong, and I'm just going to quote it because he put it very well. Moldbug said, quote, What stops the Republicans from ruling is that they do not feel they have the right to rule. Worse, they are right. They have no right to power because that right is created only by the capacity to exercise power capably. It is unfortunate that the Democrats have no such right either. Arguably, they have much less right. But the Democrats will always win and always rule because they are the ruling class and they feel that right to rule and none of their bad outcomes will ever change their minds about that. There's only one way to give the enemies of power the feeling that we have the right to rule, create the capacity to rule. They don't need that capacity to win, but we do and we would want it after we won anyway. Indeed, no one today can imagine how much popularity any such competence and the confidence that would come with it is capable of generating. Winning an election in any other way is just a waste of time at best. The public is a woman. Women like nothing so much as confidence. Instead, as none other than Newton L. Gingrich has said, you have a group of corrupt people who have absolute contempt for the American people, who would believe we are so spineless, so cowardly, so unwilling to stand up for ourselves that they can steal the presidency. Newt is right. So is the group of corrupt people, unfortunately. End quote. Until the right is able to escape the frame in which it has been placed, it cannot win. Unless we can change our conception of power and how it works and see it for what it really is and understand what it takes, we simply cannot win. But the good news is the cathedral is now exposed and more and more people can learn that lesson and that can give us hope for the future. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, if you like the video, please go ahead and hit like. If you're new here and you haven't hit subscribe yet, please go ahead and do so now. If you want to follow me on Twitter or you'd like to support my work on Subscribestar, you can do that in the links below the video. Thanks for coming by, guys, and as always, I'll talk to you next time.